Hi, this is Deborah Sable Thornbrew, and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to edit a macro in Word 2016. I've already created a macro, meaning that I've recorded it, and I have it saved to a button in my toolbar up here at the top. This is called the Quick Access Toolbar, where you have your Save button and everything else. So if I click my little happy face button here, that will run my macro. Okay, there's my macro. It's a professional signature that I want to use on my business letters. But what if I want to make some changes to it? Maybe I want to add some text or make the font look different. So right now, I'm going to press Enter a couple of times to move down. and I'm going to go ahead and edit the macro, save what I edit, and then run it again here to see if it worked. In order to edit a macro, you have to get into Visual Basic, which is a very basic programming language. There are a couple of different ways you can do that in Word 2016. One way is to go to the Developer tab, and then over here on the left, click Macros. If you don't have the Developer tab displayed, which most people don't, that's okay. Instead, you can go to the View tab, and on the View tab, the Macros button is on the right-hand side. Click the bottom button, bottom half of the button, and then click View Macros. This shows a list of all the macros I have. Right now, I just have the one, and I called it Professional Signature. I can either click Step Into. It will open the macro in Visual Basic with the first part already highlighted, or I can just click Edit. So now I'm looking at the Visual Basic code of the macro that I recorded. The main page is here in the middle. This shows the code that was recorded when I uh, created the macro. At the beginning of the macro, the first thing you see is the word SUB. Let me move this out of the way. SUB stands for subroutine meaning the beginning of the recording. So everything that goes on here below the word sub is the recorded macro. At the end of the macro you'll see that it will say end sub or end the subroutine. You don't have to type sub or end sub, it's all automated. So let's say that what I want to do first is add some text. So I'm going to add to the end of the word college. I'm going to click in there and I'm going to add something. I'm going to press my space bar and I'm going to type Oceanside, California. And then I also want to make some additional changes. Let's say that I want my name to be a little bit bigger than the rest of the font. Right now my font size is 12. Let's say I want to make my uh, name size 14. So then what I have to do is click here at the front of or to the left side of this line of code starting with selection. Press enter once to move it down a line and then I use my up button on my keyboard to move up. So what I want to do is type the word selection period and when you type the period possible options come up for you and you can scroll through all the different options or click click away from it to get rid of the options but then you get this error I'm just going to click OK to get rid of that message and I'm going to come back here and finish it correctly so I don't want to choose from that drop down menu I want to type my own so I'm going to type selection and I'm going to type the word font period and again it offers me different choices I can make about what do I want to do with my font. I just want to change the size, so I'm going to click, or rather type size. Then I'm going to type the equal sign and type 14. Now, I'm going to save what I did, click Save. I'm going to close the, the Visual Basic window, and I'm going to try running my macro again. Well, see what it did? It changed the font size for the entire macro to be 14. And that's because I placed the sizing choice above the first line of the macro, but I didn't tell it 
to just do that to the first line. So I'm going to erase this and I'm going to show you how to fix that error. So I'm going to go back in to my macro and edit it. Notice that it says selection.font.size equals 14 at the top and it doesn't say anything else about size after that. So this then is going to change the whole thing to 14 which is what it did. But I only wanted it to be for my name. So after my name I'm going to click after that and press enter once to move down and then I'm going to tell it to go back to size 12 after that. So I'm going to type selection dot font dot size equals 12. Now I'm going to save, close the Visual Basic window and try it again. There, now see my name is in size 14 and everything else in the macro is size 12. That's what I wanted it to do. And there also is the extra text that I uh, typed out, Oceanside, California. So you can make lots of different edits in your macro that way. You can edit the color, the font, the size, what type of font it is, the style. Uh, you can create lots of different things uh, and edit lots of different things in your macro as desired. Just have to remember to uh, save what you do. And let me go back into it just very briefly. Just remember that you need to type very carefully, you need to save what you do, and if you made a mistake you can always come back into Visual Basic and change it again.